Well, good evening, friends. This is Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I love sitting here. I love being down here in my man cave. I love talking about the Dallas Cowboys, and I feel like it's my mission. And part of the reason why I originally started doing this channel was to kind of set the record straight. You know, when news breaks in the Cowboys, I love telling you guys, hey, Tyron Smith looks like he's coming back this week. But instead of just following the headlines, I like to look at how this impacts other parts of the team. Because Tyron Smith coming back then means, well, we got, you know, Terrence Steele, who last year was a guy who, you know, people were ready to push him overboard and say, cut him, don't ever bring him back, to a guy who played lights out for Lyle Collins, and Lyle Collins wouldn't have gotten his starting role back had it not been for them saying, we need you to save us on the left side with Tyron Smith out. And so I like to look at the dynamics of how that affects what's going to happen, of course, this week. You know, Jerry Jones saying that um, basically if Tyron Smith is coming back, it's going to be a fight between Lyle Collins and Terrence Steele. And look towards how that affects us for the rest of the season as well as next year, not just as a player standpoint, but monetarily. So that way you're getting a full picture of everything that's going on. And I, I feel like that's getting you more informed about everything that is football. And so um, I like to look at numbers. I like to look at statistics. I like to look at things that have happened in the past because I feel like a lot of that stuff will lead me to correct assumptions for the future. And by no, no means am I correct all the time. I am not. I'm not trying to even pretend that I am all the time because I will get things wrong. But I dare say I'm at least as correct as the talking heads out there that will feed you all kinds of stuff. It was almost comical to me today listening to Mike Greenberg, who was trying to say, you know, the reason you're here is not because of the ESPN poll, but because of what I have to say about it. And he basically said the Cowboys are the Super Bowl team to beat. But, you know, this is the same guy who a few months ago was talking about the Washington football team being the 49ers of a couple of years ago with, you know, Ryan Fitz tragic being less tragic than he's been and the defense being, you know, one of the great defenses in football. And yeah, and how's that working out? Not real good. So I like to give you a little bit something different than what everybody else has. And Micah Parsons, oh my God, Micah Parsons. When you think just getting Micah Parsons is freaking amazing, to think that we traded with the Eagles and took him. You know, when all the experts are saying, oh, you need a cornerback, you need a cornerback. Yeah, okay. The Cowboys took that linebacker, but not only taking Micah Parsons with that trade back, they also got Goldston. And Goldston's played some valuable minutes and, you know, has played well. And you look at that as a hell of a bonus that the Dallas Cowboys got along with Micah Parsons. And most people will tell you, well, it's a runaway, you know, it's a runaway for defensive rookie of the year. You know, it's sewn up. As long as Micah Parsons makes it through the season, it's his. Well, I'm here to tell you it's time to stop talking about defensive rookie of the year. Just be done with it. I'm sick of it. it it's no point in talking about defensive rookie of the year. Because what we really need to be talking about is defensive player of the year. I know you're looking at me like, dude, are you on crack? Are you crazy? And I'm going to say no. Because what you're seeing right now with Micah Parsons is freaking amazing. Okay? Micah Parsons, because the thing about Micah Parsons is, is he an edge rusher or is he a linebacker? Because when you're an edge rusher, generally speaking, you're going to get a lot of sacks. You're going to get tackles for losses. You're going to get quarterback hits. You're not going to get a whole lot of tackles numbers-wise. Because when you're a linebacker, the defense is designed for you to make the plays. It's made for the defensive lineman to stop the, 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 the offensive lineman to get to the second level. It's your job to scrape and make all the tackles. So generally speaking, a linebacker, good linebacker, will make over 100 tackles you know, in a season. 
but he's not getting a lot of sacks. He might get two, three, four sacks and stuff because they're blitzing, but it's not really their thing. It's not what they really, really do. So you have Micah Parsons who's doing both of these roles. Both of these roles. But it's crazy because of the numbers that he's getting. Right now, let me just give you where he is right now. Solo tackles, currently he has 44. If he continues that pace, by the end of the year, he will have 83 solo tackles. That means tackles by himself. Okay? Combined tackles, he has 58. He's on pace for 109 uh, total tackles combined. Tackles for losses, he has 11 right now on pace for 20. Sacks, he has six. He's on pace for 11. Quarterback hits, he's got 15. He's on pace for 28. And forced fumbles, he has one, so he's on pace for two. Um, When you look at his place in the NFL, for solo tackles, he's 28th. I'm not saying that that's outstanding, but when you take a right all the... Philly, so why do you always start... start this video. I'm trying to understand why the heck Philly's always the ghost in my machine here. He's 28th in solo tackles. That means if you take every single defensive player in the NFL, all of them, he's the 28th in solo tackles. If you take him and combine tackles, he's 44th. I know you're like, okay, that's not that high. But take every defensive player. Actually, it is. Because an edge rusher usually is not leading a team in tackles. In fact, I don't think it's ever happened. Tackles for loss. He's fourth in the NFL in tackles for losses. Sacks. He's 13th. Quarterback hits. He's 12th. In forced fumbles, he's 42nd. Okay, so you're like, okay, big deal. What does that all mean? Well, let me put this into um, a perspective here and give you an idea of where that stacks up from what we did, say, last year. Last year, and and this will give you what I mean about being a linebacker, you're going to get more tackles. Jalen Smith had 154 tackles last year okay and a lot of that was because our defense was constantly on the field we ended up having so many plays against us because we could not get off the field if you got a great defense that's putting people three and out you're not going to get a lot of tackles um but with that jalen smith 154 tackles which is a lot of tackles i think it was one of the leading tacklers in the nfl if not the leading problem was is he would usually get carried downfield when he's getting tackled but what i want you to look at is his solo tackles, he had 89. Micah Parsons is on pace for 83. Tackles for loss, he had five. Micah Parsons is on pace for 20. Quarterback hits, he had four. Micah Parsons is on pace for 28. And that's what I mean by linebackers aren't going to have a lot of those quarterback hits and tackles for loss because, you know, they're five yards off the ball. But if we take Demarcus Lawrence, and you'll see the reverses here, you'll see a lot more sacks. Demarcus Lawrence had six and a half sacks. Well, right now, Mike Parsons has six. He's on pace for 11. Uh, Solo tackles, D-Law had 34. Micah Parsons is on pace to have 83. Um, Tackles for loss, D-Law had 11. And right now, Mike Parsons has 11 and is on pace for 20. Quarterback hits. D-Law, who was a defensive end all season long, had 10. Micah Parsons has 15 already and is on pace for 28. So you look at the numbers there. Right now, he's about to blow away the numbers for our number one defensive end last year. And he's not going to have, you know, he, uh, the, the number of tackles total. 
But you look at the quarterback hits, the tackles for loss and all that, the solo tackles, he's up there with your linebacker. You're combining those two players, and you're getting those numbers just from Micah Parsons. And I know you're saying, okay, yeah, well, last year's defense was terrible. You can't say that Demarcus Lawrence is one of the best you know, edge rushers last year, although they did say he's one of the best run stoppers in the NFL. All right, what I want to do is let's change this up a little bit. Let's go to 2017 when Demarcus Lawrence was actually, I think, third in MVP, defensive MVP numbers in voting. His numbers, highlighted in yellow there, had 14 and a half sacks. Micah Parsons is on pace for 11. Not as many sacks. Combined tackles, he had 58. Micah Parsons made double that with 109. Solo tackles, Micah Parsons is on pace for 83 as opposed to 35 from D-Law. Tackles for loss, Micah Parsons is on pace for 20. He's already got 11. D-Law had 14. Quarterback hits, right now Micah Parsons is on pace to have two more uh, tackles, excuse me, quarterback hits than D-Law in his MVP, not runner-up, Try up? I don't know. What do you call it? Okay. I know what you're saying, but he didn't win it. Okay. Let's take a look at Miles Garrett. I believe last year, didn't he win Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett? He had 12 sacks. Right now, Micah Parsons is on pace for 11. He had 48 combined tackles. Again, Micah Parsons is on pace for 109. Solo tackles. Miles Garrett had 33. He's on pace for 83. Tackles for loss. Already, already Micah Parsons has more tackles for loss than Miles Garrett had all last year. He's got 11 right now on pace for 20. Um, quarterback hits right now. Mike Parsons already at 15 on pace for 28 and force fumbles. Miles Garrett had four. Mike Parsons is on pace to have two. So now I go back to my original premise here. I'm talking about Mike Parsons. Mike Parsons is something that we've never seen before. Is he a linebacker? Is he an edge rusher? Is he just a damn freak that's coming to kick your ass? The Terminator. He is an absolute positive beast. And I think instead of just saying he's the runaway rookie defensive player of the year, it's time to start putting him in the category of defensive player of the year. Now, the thing that's crazy about this, though, is the fact that we have Diggs back there who's got eight interceptions, and mind you, nobody in the last 30 years for the Dallas Cowboys has had more than six in a season. He has eight right now with seven more games to go. So eight more games to go. This changing to 17 games is still messing with my head. This, my friends, is insane what we are seeing. These numbers, if they hold true, will be almost historic. This is what you call a game-changing, generational-type talent. There's no guarantee that he doesn't end up being Chase Young next year and, you know, completely comes back down to earth. And mind you, you look at his numbers right now versus Chase Young. Micah Parsons' numbers with Chase Young right now are Chase Young's number for the whole season. But what you're seeing here is a very, very special player. And one of the main reasons why this defense went from 28 to 10. So when you start saying this player is the most valuable player, defensive player, between him and having Dan Quinn as the coach, you've had a complete 180 turnaround on this defense. And without Micah Parsons, it does not happen. 
Defensive Player of the Year. Remember, I'm the first one here to start talking about that with Micah Parsons. And with that being said, you know how we roll. We need to get up on out of here. And let's see. Just remember what you always want to try and do. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters.